Welcome to heaven, mother... <laughs> This is the card, this is the track, and this is someone who did not use wedges. You should be able to just stick a bar in here and make it loose. First race of the day, we are starting in P4 as car number six with a 206.906, just about a tenth ahead of uh, Jay Wong in the qualifying, who's starting in P5 behind us. And our bad launch is going to give him an opportunity to make a move into turn one. You can see the three ahead pulling away. I'm actually under attack by uh, P5 and P6 behind us. Car number five in P5 going around the first corner of the inside puts too much throttle through. That will be Jay Wong spinning off to the side and bumping into the wall behind us as we are able to skate away, maintain just about maintaining P4, actually battling for it with uh, Ali Kudas, who is on our left side now as we head into turn two, going to do our best to break just a little bit later. The inside definitely has an advantage here. You have to be extremely tight as the outside car, which this guy is not. So he goes flying off to the side and we maintain our position. And uh, we now have the car number two. 12 who actually started in p7 now behind us and my goal on this first run up the mountain is to not only separate myself to him but try to catch alexander ahead and see if maybe we could end up riding their slipstream for i don't know as long as we possibly can because they're already beginning to pull away and once a group of two or three forms generally they're going to pull away especially if it's a group at the front they're already fast and now they have the speed of each other and the pole sitter who is probably the fastest person on the track without slipstream to uh, tow them along as we come out of forest elbow onto the con rod we do have enough of a gap so that uh, we're, we're safe there and actually uh, all the way up until lap three we are safe so car number 12 on lap three getting pretty close to us actually going a bit deep through turn one and that will slowly chip away at the gap that's kind of been rubber banding behind us it's been anywhere from about half of a second to about eight tenths right now the ladder three seconds behind Alexander and Paolo up ahead but anything can happen in a race and here we are turn two lap three and car number two Paolo just driving into the dirt for seemingly no reason and then sliding out into the pedigree wall that's also going to slow down Alexander as he almost bounces into him so the gap rapidly coming down between the both of them you could barely see it but that is Paolo actually the next car ahead so we are beginning to catch him and I know that something big must have just happened but I'm not sure if he has damage or not I mean losing two seconds rapidly on the relative like that obviously there's something that happened and spoilers the relative gives it away that Paolo is out so he does have damage and uh, you can see that pretty quickly as we come through skyline we are closing up the gap rapidly to him actually having to slow down quite a lot through here you can't really make a pass which is unfortunate because we had that gap from Alexander closed down to about two seconds at the beginning of the mountain because of him slowing down for Paolo, but he's gonna get that time back, so that didn't really end up giving me any sort of advantage towards Alexander. However, I am going to get a free position from Paolo, as it's hard to tell from this angle, but uh, we'll see as we launch past him that he's not quite up to full pace and his car is literally drifting or uh, crab walking is a better term for it all of the way down the Conrad straight. So we take that position now up into a podium position and we did lose a bit of time to Alexander, but it's not the end of the world. A battle behind us raging as car number 21 looks to take P8 from car number nine here. So they're gonna go side by side through the chase and nine doing his best to maintain the inside, hold 21 out wide, takes a lot of that curb and it unsettles the car completely. And just about as much as this affected him, it is going to affect Jay Wong who spun out on turn one as nine rejoins the track right in front of him. Not much that Jay Wong could do here. Oh, come on, man, what the fuck? Uh, yep, understandably upset about that one. Next lap, Jay Wong is now following closely behind this big battle, slinging it up the inside from deep on the chase, and that's going to be way too much speed into the dirt. So I think uh, once that aggravation kind of settled in, and I mean, this goes for everybody. Driving angry, never drive angry, just don't do it. If you get angry, take some deep breaths. Lap number seven, and he's coming up to Carlos, car number 20 here behind him. Boom, smacking the back of him as Carlos may have broke slightly early but i don't know what are you doing carlos and he now finds himself in a horrible situation there's like five cars within like three tenths of a second eight slinging it up the inside on jay wong who is now finds himself on the outside what can you do and he should be safe here however <laughs> pink little tiny kiss from car number eight and that's going to actually give him a drive through and rather than serve it he's just going to disconnect so that will be the end of jay wong's run uh, lap number nine comes around and we are on a total island now we have four seconds behind us 
four seconds ahead of us to Alexander, so we've only really lost about a second and a half to him in, I don't know, the last like three laps, currently sitting just around four and a half. But as we climb up the mountain, you'll see exactly where I'm losing all of that time. So it's sitting at four and a half as we begin the ascent. And I mean, just watching the relative here, we just lost the 10th. Uh, we just lost, just about lost another one. I think that one will go in just a second. And I think it was really a case of me lifting a bit too much, probably scrubbing as well, not totally utilizing the weight of the car and the weight transfer to turn it. Uh, this was also my first race of this day. Get that fucking disclaimer out there. Get the excuses. Eat that shit up, boys. Um, so that's my excuse for this. Uh, my, my mountain, specifically. My mountain run, this whole race was not great. I was consistently slower than the car ahead of me. On the previous lap, I was losing three tenths. By the time we come out of the forest elbow, I've lost another three. Uh, just about four tenths, actually, as we get onto the Conrad. And that seemed to be a theme, so I didn't really have much hope of catching this guy. I had been watching the relative for the past few laps. I saw the patterns, uh, but I couldn't have seen this. As he goes through the chase, taking way too much of that first curb, sliding as he gets two tires over into the dirt on the right side, completely off of the track, just as I am approaching. So I will be able to nip up ahead of him, and that's going to give us P2. We're 13 seconds behind Nikolai, but... We're ahead of Alexander now. Uh, we have three more laps to go. This is lap number 10 of 12. So we have 10, 11, 12. And I mean, he's really only about a second, just just over a second behind us. We get, we get a pretty decent run through the first corner here. And I'm not sure if it was more of us getting a good run or him getting bad run, but he doesn't really close that gap up much at all at this point. By the time we climb the mountain, I know that this is where we may get separated, so I have to have a good run up. If I have a bad run here, I ha I could have him on my tail with Slipstream for two more laps, which would absolutely fuck me, potentially two and a half if he gets close enough by the end of the elbow. So I'm doing my damnedest to not let that happen. Uh, keeping the throttle down, lifting, trying to lift more minimally, but really doing just about the exact same thing as I did before. And if you look at the relative, he is just beginning to edge closer and closer to us until he drives super deep here into the dirt as he goes through Skyline. And that will give us a very, very, very much needed about three tenths cushion. So the gap is up to 1.5 tenths or uh, 1.5 seconds at this point, which is perfect. It should keep us out of slipstream range just about through the elbow and we don't get the best run through there but it's not terrible i've had way worse runs in my life he has a pretty good run through there as he seems to have every single lap by the time lap 11 comes around we were just about able to hold that advantage that we gained from him going wide uh, into skyline trying to keep that there run through the first quarter could have been better uh, could have always been better i moved to the left side here as i'm kind of trying to avoid slipstream and by the time we get to the mountain he's basically within one second again which sucks so it's back to exactly where we were last lap trying to do my damnedest to run away from him here keep my foot down as much as I can and as I say that I'm literally lifting when I don't need to be through there that was definitely somewhere I feel like I was losing time uh, on a lot of these laps I just wasn't ready to commit as hard as I know that I can which sucks it's a it's a shitty feeling to know that you're faster but you're not doing the work for it. So whatever, we are coming down the dipper and keeping that gap at about a second. Okay, run through there. Uh, my exit felt pretty good. I, I may have overslowed originally. Into the elbow, my worst corner on this track. I'm absolutely fucking god awful at this corner. And what the hell was that? I was freaking tap dancing on the throttle. Try, I mean, I sent it way too deep in there, just about locked up my tires. And obviously that's gonna give him a really good run. I begin swerving at this point in a bit of desperation. This is lap 11, so we only have one more lap left to go, uh, which, you know, he is now in slipstream range. He's half a second behind us, but at least I was able to have those two laps, you know, keeping him for the most part beyond the second behind us. So I really only have to deal with him for one lap, which should be doable if we don't make any glaring mistakes. As we begin the Fiano lap, he is heavily in slipstream. Uh, I know I have a lot of work to put in and against somebody of his caliber, and this may be stereotypical, or I don't know what the word for this is, but anybody who has a last name that looks like that, like I just immediately assume is probably a pretty good driver. And in this case, I was right trying to just keep him behind us, actually not keep him behind us. We're doing like some slight swerving here to try and dissuade the slipstream. It's really not doing anything. He is uh, he is within half of a second as we reach turn two. And if the pattern from early, earlier continues, he should be able to close up this gap by about three tenths through the mountain. 
which is fine. We understand our situation and uh, we should be able to manage it. Coming around as we begin our ascent, we have four tenths behind us. Super fortunate here as we come through, I don't know, this right hand section. We're gonna hop on board with him, smacking the right, smacking the left, which if you do correctly is actually the optimal way to take that part of the track. But he did actually lose a little bit of speed from that. The, the gap stopped closing and it kind of shot back to about half of a second. Had that not happened, I believe he probably could have closed the gap up to closer to three tenths at this point. I'm absolutely fucking shipping it into the dipper as fast as just about I have ever done it on a, in this race at least. Finally up to pace there, actually gain a tenth on him and through the forest elbow, trying to do the same thing, minimal braking, meet the inside. We're just about able to do it. I mean, that was a really solid run. Regardless, even if we had the best run in the world, we would really be relying on him to have a bad one to put him out of contention here. He is still about five tenths behind us, so half a second. We're doing a little bit of swerving to try and dissuade him. Uh, it's not gonna do a ton, but as long as we make it through this corner, we should maintain the lead. And honestly, I was not taking any chances this race. We were able to get through here. We, we took it extra slow, actually. He gained about a tenth on us through there. Before we go any further, please remember to hit the like button, the subscribe, and the bell icon only if my girlfriend can make a truck in a bucket. If she can make that car, the truck, into that bucket, then you have to like, subscribe, and hit the bell. All right, come on, baby. <gasps> oh shit. It's outside of our prison. We lost it for good, boys. It's over. And into the final corner, I'm not risking anything. I'm taking a defensive line. Move over for a semi-defensive line after I see him move to the outside. And yes, this gives him an opportunity that may not have been there otherwise, but had I stayed on the outside, he could have just shipped it from downtown. Crossing the line, just barely ahead of him. We're literally side by side as I take P2. Beating a faster driver, I mean, that's racing. You don't have to be faster to beat somebody. You know, you can just be consistent. There's a lot of different ways to do it. Either way, super happy about that. Here are the results for that one. So crossing the line, there we are in P2, Alexander, 5K driver, faster than me by a vast majority, not gonna lie. Uh, looking at the gains and losses, it's pretty much all gains, baby. It's green on both sides. So we've, I mean, great. You, you, don't, you don't get better than that, really. And uh, looking at the laps, yeah, I, I was in a bit of a different league. I wasn't in the right mindset. I'm gonna blame it on first race of the day. Now, second race of the day, everything is different now. We're doing a 206.2 in P3, Aaron Knight, a couple of cars behind us, and he is uh, rocking the alt pole racing livery. Shout out to Aaron Knight. He also streams, check him out in the Discord. Lap number one, let's get underway. Goodbye, goodbye to you two up there as I do continue to do my grandpa launch. Car number five, looking to go around the outside, gonna end up tucking behind us. Aaron going side by side with uh, this red car, the View Sonic car. And as everybody makes it around the first corner, love to see that. We are able to just about separate ourselves from car number five, not really in any danger. Aaron Knight is in a bit of danger as the guy on his inside is blinking in and out of existence. Aaron gonna go wide around turn two. That's not only going to give the position to the uh, view sonic but also to car number 16 here who slides ahead of him so aaron losing two positions but there's a lot of race left almost i don't know what's going on with this guy it was insane it was all race and uh, car number 16 almost seeds the position back to aaron because of his hesitation to get close to that guy uh meanwhile we are able to begin to separate ourselves from car number five behind us who's in p4 that's nicholas and attempting to catch vitor who i know we can catch before this is the guy we had the tennis match with uh, I think I have the pace absolutely to catch battle and potentially beat him in this race. So that would give us a P2 if we could make that happen. By the time we come out of the elbow, we are catching him slightly as well as separating ourselves from P4. By the time we come to finish out the first lap, this is the final corner of that lap. Four tenths behind Vitor. We are catching him like mad. And I just, I released the brakes way too early. Uh, slide myself out and thankfully don't hit car number five. As I rejoin the track, I lose three positions. The last of those positions being Aaron as we cross onto lap number two. So we are now following behind Aaron. We have both of the pole racing cars crossing uh, the first corner of lap two together. And not really much to say about that. Unfortunate, it was quite a blunder by myself dropping uh, the podium down to P6, but it is not the end of the world. It is far from it. There are 10 laps left in this race. 
Uh, there's a lot of potential definitely at least to catch up to Nicholas, who's currently in P3. And it looks like there's a bit of a lockup ahead. I get in my head a little bit about that and mess up my run as well. Sometimes if you see somebody make a mistake, you will make a mistake. It's a weak mentality and it's something that I struggle with every so often. Car number three, this is Paolo uh, from last race who drove into the dirt for seemingly no reason on turn two. We are going to maintain position ahead of him into the chase and ah never mind we are going to take the grass route instead as we went much too fast through that corner and i just opted to cut that corner and serve the penalty instead of putting myself and paolo in danger as i could have lost the car and then i go wide into the final corner of lap number two so as we start lap number three we're a few more positions down and as much as i would like to say that the only way to go from here is up i think there were 24 cars in this lobby so there is quite a lot of room for us to go down trying not to make that happen as we follow Nicola Paskin pa Pascan down the mountain for the third time lap number three and through skyline I think is where we are really able to separate ourselves from some drivers when we are taking this at full pace and we're comfortable we can usually gain quite a bit of time through there relative to most of uh, these these drivers and sure enough here we are two tenths behind Nicola trying to minimize the braking into forest elbow have to actually break a little bit more than I would like to there as he slows down quite a bit and my exit will suffer from that so we unfortunately won't be able to put a move on him there up ahead of us car number two who has been fighting his way through the pack is making a move in on the inside of car number 10 I see that in the relative and and I'm recognizing that there's a faster car who's kind of in the middle of the pack with me. So there's potential for him to fight his way through the grid, maybe cause some mayhem, maybe just cause, you know, a couple of side-by-side -side instances that could slow down people, bring them back to us, potentially cause more mayhem for other people. I don't know. It's just something that I think of in the race when I see a faster person in the pack. Lap number four, looking up the inside of Nicola, deciding against it because it's a much, much safer move and you lose a lot less time. If you just focus on a good exit through turn one and make a move into turn two, however, our exit wasn't great. We're not able to get the move done into turn two, so we now find ourselves stuck behind Nicola for potentially an entire other lap until, you know, the chase, the Conrad, or once turn two comes back around. Unless he makes a mistake, which he goes extremely wide here, I was not prepared for it. End up just touching the back of his bumper, and that's going to, going to end up losing us some time to the cars ahead. Speaking of the cars ahead, number 10, who just got passed by two, runs into the wall up the mountain. We are pretty close behind, and uh, unfortunately not able to pick that position up on the mountain, but it should bring him back, maybe cause uh, some sort of situation that could allow me to gain both of these positions. And as we go through Skyline, that's not going to happen. He has damage, I guess. So he just pulls off to the side and we go past him. Does gift us P10 though, so can't be upset about that. Once again, we find ourselves two tenths as we go through the dipper behind Nicola, heading to the forest elbow. Same situation. I know he slows down a lot here, so I'm trying to kind of maneuver my line around that and take advantage where I can stay as close as I possibly can, still get a good exit. We're 0.1 seconds behind him. The slipstream should be in full effect right now. We had a decent run as well, so that should help us out. And you can already see us getting sucked up closer to him, moving to the inside for uh, the end or for the start of the chase. I I guess the end of the Conrad which is actually the outside for the chase and he's going to tuck behind us it looks like there is somebody off in the field doing something perhaps farming I don't know don't care I get a free position from that and that will put us up into p8 so three positions on one lap and that was actually from Paolo who drove into the dirt on the last lap as he does something we have all done before taking too much of that curb at the end of the Conrad sliding out to the right Managing to avoid the wall though, which is great. So no damage, but uh, definitely some overheated tires now. Lap number five, Aaron is fighting, uh, what is his name? I think that this guy's name is Ruben Valley. So he's fighting car number 16, Ruben Valley for P4. He is currently sitting in P5 with a big opportunity up ahead as it seems like P3 and P4 are both pretty close. Get a good run through here and you could look for a move on the Conrad. It's not gonna need to go that far though as Valley slips out not really a ton Aaron can do there. He gets caught behind and runs into the back of him. Car number two goes around both of them, and it looks like Ruben may have some damage here. His car is looking a little bit janky from the rear end. Bit of a wiggle coming out from Aaron. I'm not sure what that is trying to communicate, but it's happening. We are currently 3.4 seconds behind Ruben, uh, about two and a half to uh, the next car, who is this crazy guy that we've seen 
who honestly does not have internet capable of playing iRacing, but is here anyway. And um, as they enter to the chase, he's looking to go around the outside of Ruben here, manages to go really deep, get the car stopped, it looks like, just gets loose on the exit, and Ruben is able to find room on the inside of the final corner, so they're going to go side by side. This is already slowing them down enough to kind of introduce me to this fight. Meanwhile, Aaron is starting to put pressure onto, uh, what is that guy, Fabio, who is uh, car number two. Ignacio doing the thing he's done all races we cross over to lap number eight and I'm absolutely terrified of the moment when I catch this guy I feel like it is a very easy way to die trying to go side by side or make a move around somebody who is doing this I just can't under uh, I mean it's it's not his fault but I hate driving against it against anybody who this happens to especially on this track as when, when the race is live, what this looks like, it looks different on the replay. What this looks like when the race is live is he's basically just hitting every single wall constantly, and I can't tell if he's ever actually hitting a wall. He's locking up his tires now, and I realize, okay, this is the real him. I'm right behind him, 0.1 seconds around him. Got to be careful here with the move. This is probably my best opportunity to get this done. He's gone. What the fuck? And he's back. Okay, cool. But he's back on the left side of us. <laughs> what the fuck, dude? Okay, we are around him before the end of the Conrad. Shout out to him. I think he may have lifted at some point there to aid us in that overtake. Don't know. Don't care. Ruben goes off here, and we are able to sneak up the... Well, I guess it's technically the inside there as he gets lost on that curb. And he now gets passed by Ignacio as well. So he's moving down, possibly struggling with damage, though. So you can't blame him. As we cross the final corner, start of lap number nine. Um, yeah, we're we're under pressure from these guys. I'm trying not to think about it too much. They've kind of been battling with each other, and sometimes when you see two people battling with each other and you're behind them, you get past them. Somehow you manage to get past both of them, and then they just continue to battle with each other and forget about you. So that's what I'm hoping will happen here. Nobody looks for a move into turn two, which I was kind of anticipating might happen. Uh, there, he was probably close enough to, he may have even lifted there. I think he just didn't want to start a fight up the mountain. As uh, we begin our ascent, 2.5 seconds behind Aaron Knight, who is uh, in the alt pole racing livery. He's racing with PSR, the pole sim racing team. Join the Discord if you want to hear more about that. We've got some stuff going on in there. By the time we go through the Dipper, we have separated ourselves behind from Ignacio by a, a few tenths. We've got him just about over half of a second. We have almost closed by about half of a second to Aaron as well, looking for a good run out of the elbow. It's pretty solid. Felt good about that one. And uh, we now have Aaron under two seconds with three laps to go. So I need to take about a second a lap if I want to get past him. And by the time we cross turn one of lap number 10, almost lose it on the exit there. Uh, had I had a better exit, we probably could have done more. We were just about in slipstream range at this point, 1.2 seconds behind Aaron. And by the time we get into turn two, it's going to continue to close. If we get a good run through the mountain, I think we possibly could look to make a move on the Conrad. It's uh, it's totally going to depend on our mountain run here. Just really try not to hit the wall, get loose anywhere. This is a big opportunity to make a mistake if we were able to keep it planted. Oh, man. And then my car red lines in second gear. I've been having an issue with my wheelbase uh, where it, it, it overheats and it begins to not shift. And it seems like it does it on certain parts of the track as well. I swear to God, this is a real thing. I have like the OG R9, uh, Moza R9, and it's a known issue with it, like force feedback loss and shifting loss. I don't know. Uh, it's a problem that I suffer from. That does kind of bring Ignacio back into the picture behind us. We're able to get the car back under control, but whenever I start to feel that happen, I do get a bit nervous with my inputs. Um, I don't want to get stuck in a gear at some point and then just kind of like lose my bearings on what's going on. Crossing onto the penultimate lap, it looks like there's a battle for the podium up ahead of us between Nicholas and Fabio, but uh, that's not really my main focal point right now. It is Aaron, who is 0.4 seconds ahead of us. We get a really solid run out of turn one, uh, rapidly closing the gap to him, plus the slipstream. This should be a textbook move. Outside, inside, where are you going? I will do either. He stays in the middle. I prefer the inside, of course. They it looks like they're side by side up ahead of us as well, so somebody could end up getting held back up there. Trying to break late on the inside to dissuade him from being able to hold us tight. He does drift a bit wide there, and we take that position while Fabio is still being held back, looking for a potential move into, I think that's turn five uh, up the mountain. Not going to go for it, though, so he will be stuck behind car number five for another lap, which is great. I think Fabio is the faster driver. This opens up an opportunity for us to be able to catch him. We have this lap and then one more. 
currently sitting 2.5 seconds behind Fabio and that gap seems to be coming down as we continue our ascent up the mountain and as we begin our descent now this is where I think we have the most potential to gain time especially because Nicholas is under so much pressure from Fabio sometimes that makes you take safer lines you don't want to uh you don't want to mess up under the pressure so you kind of conserve yourself a little bit like conserve your driving I don't know if that makes any sense through the elbow and we are just about under we are under two seconds to Fabio now not getting the best run out of the elbow and uh, that's going to kind of stop the bleeding that was the gap closing between myself and Fabio. Aaron behind us is far enough behind so that we don't have to worry about an overtake happening. Uh, Fabio looking to get an absolute monster of a slingshot here. A ton of a speed difference. Five taking the outside. Fabio slinging it up the inside of the chase. Extremely close driving. Car number five looking for a potential switchback, but it's not going to happen as Fabio still maintains a really good exit. Moves to the inside of the final quarter. Five trying to do a little fake there, but he's going to have to take the outside here if he wants to make a move. Trying to turn in early to avoid uh, losing that camber on the outside, but it happens anyway, and Fabio moves ahead as we cross onto the Fiano lap once again. Aaron Knight under pressure from Ignacio behind, but unwavering on the outside to take the racing line, and Ignacio is going to stay behind him. We get an absolutely terrible exit of turn one, completely losing the car, somehow keeping it in a straight line, but definitely losing our advantage uh, that we could have had with the slipstream there to Nicholas. By the time we climb the mountain again, gonna redline. My wheel is being a little hoe bag right now. Continuing our ascent now, uh, trying to just forget that that just happened and not let it affect our driving for the rest of this lap. We have three tenths of a second until we are able to catch Nicholas, and it looks like we are already gaining. Hopefully, with a good run through here, uh, through Skyline and into the Dipper, we can make it small enough of a gap so that we could put a move down onto the Conrad and through the chase. That is my goal at the moment. However, he has a pretty solid run through there and is able to keep us at that same gap. Through the elbow, not my favorite corner, probably my least favorite. He goes super deep. I basically follow him and the gap does not change at all. So both directions, we have half of a second. He just about has the slipstream as well from the car ahead and that will keep him ahead as we cross the line, finishing this race in P5. And uh, Aaron behind will do some wiggle celebrations. Me personally, I prefer to run my car full speed into a wall if that option is available, and that is what I do. Here's multiple views of that. It was pretty freaking Yep, that was that race done. As well as that whole week, last race of the week, finishing P5. Can't be upset about that. Congratulations to Aaron as well. Drove a super solid race there, finishing P6, and uh, we needed those gains desperately because this week... <laughs> Yeah, there have been some bad results. If you enjoyed this video and want to support me, please check out my channel, some of my other videos, and I'm willing to bet you will enjoy those as well. Peace.